welcome to episode 195 of the Muck Podcast, a member of the Odd Pods Media Network. Listen in as we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. I'm Tina Hanamio. And I'm Hillary Dockerty. Hillary. Hi. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> this is podcast four in this week so yes. far. Oh yes. my God. Yes. I have not edited our things from Wednesday yet, so I'm going to have a lot of work. Oh, you probably oh. tomorrow. I edited it, so we'll see some of our fun clips. Yeah, coming out on our they were social good. Media. They were good. There's <laughs> one line in your story. I watched the whole video already, but oh. there was one line in your story that I thought was really. I, I, you know, sometimes we end episodes, and I'm like, I don't know, because it's a shorter episode. Oh, I and I'm like, I, I don't know. Is it, it going to be good? good? It was. A good it was episode. good. When I went back and watched, I'm like, I'm like, all right, episode. all right, all right. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Why are we talking about this bullshit when we have a birthday to celebrate? Oh. Oh. Happy! Let's do everybody. Everybody together. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy. I have a worse voice. Happy it's birthday to you. Happy birthday, sweet, amazing angel Tina. Oh my god. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Oh my gosh. Are you one? Are you two? Counting. That's the most evil shit I've ever heard. How dare people. How These terrible. fucking kids. We get to 12. Fuck yeah. you. All right? I can't. I can't. So in true, you know, Hillary fashion, one of your gifts, which is amazing, is oh. not here yet. Oh. So. I don't know. We're going to New York. I don't need a gift. Oh, stop it. Stop it. We I are going like to New York, New York though. We're, we're leaving in kids. less six days. Oh, 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 oh yeah, my well, God. By the time they hear this, we'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back by the time you hear this. Because this is coming. Yeah. But I have a couple things. Some things came. Oh. So this is one that I got yesterday because I just, I love you. Right. And when you float, girl, you can have some fun with that. It's a lot of tissue paper. I love tissue paper. Me too. I like so the my sound cat. of tissue paper. <laughs> this is my favorite in the world. <laughs> I dark chocolate, seventy-two percent cocoa. Yeah, I do eat a Cacao. little square. I'll do like a little yeah, yeah. square a day. Yeah, and sometimes I put it in the freezer and then mm. have like a little square of like cold dark chocolate. It's the best. Oh, that sounds so good. Thing in the world. You have really good restraint. Cause I'd be gone by now if that was me. You know, it's so nice to have a one little yeah, piece, yeah, yeah. and then it's you know, it's like like a little treat. Yeah. All right. Now this I got you because we were at karaoke one night, and you said that someone was wearing this, and you said that you really love this jacket and you want that jacket. What? And I was like, All right. Oh, I just said what it was. <laughs> I went. <whipped>. Spoiler alert. <laughs> wait, what is this? Oh my God! Wait. Oh wait, I think I remember this. Hold on. <laughs> Where did we see this? This was at karaoke. Yes, there was a guy wearing this like, jacket, this and you're like, like, that is the coolest jacket ever. It is the ever. coolest jacket ever. Do you like it? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love anything with like a stripe. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know you do. I know you I do. I love a stripe. It just, it, it's got Michael Imperioli vibes. Yes. Totally. Any kind of stripe like this. Yes, totally. <gasps> Sopranos vibes. Oh. Speaking of Michael Imperioli. Yeah. I, you know, I have that beautiful book that uh, he wrote, but I don't want to read it because, like, <clears throat> however he signed that love note to me. Oh, my God. So, um, <laughs> I'm get, the paperback is coming in, and so I'm very excited. So you haven't read it because you don't want to open it I up? didn't want to, like, you know, because when I read, like, I kind of lay, and I didn't oh, want to, okay. you know, and it's a hardcover, and oh, I didn't want to. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. This is wild. That was, like, a year ago. That was a long time ago. I know. Oh my god. Oh my god. And it's out also it's in a box. And I also have like stacks of books. And so, you know, I got that, but it's still like, you know, it's not quite ready to be read yet, but it now it is because uh -huh. I'm finishing and whatever. It doesn't matter. Who cares? There's a lot of rules. A lot of organization rules to my books. here. Okay. Yeah, we've got a lot of things going on. So well, happy birthday. And I'm excited to take you to New York. Oh my God. And I told you, we, we have had, both of us have had the craziest fucking weeks ever. So busy. It has been. I told you, we're not, plan I can't plan anything for, to New York, for New York until tomorrow. Like, I that's when tried, I'll look in and see, like, what can we do? I have tried for three weeks. Yeah. On a weekend to just go and buy a pair of pants. <laughs> and, you know, one weekend I was sick. 
Yeah. Then the next weekend, you know, my my uh, back is jacked up. Mm. And then this weekend, my toilets and showers are clogged and overflowing. It is just, can I just buy a pair of pants? Like, I don't, I don't understand. This is happened. the universe trying to say, you don't need to buy a pair of pants? Yeah, maybe. But also, like, right before I go on a vacation that I'm, like, looking forward to or, like, a trip, something wild happens where now I've got to get through it. So that's why I keep thinking, I'm just going to get through the week. Just got to get through the week. And then we'll be okay. Like six we, days. I won't be good days. until we're sitting in that airport, honey. Or more importantly, sitting on the plane. Then I'll be okay. But yeah, I can't wait to just be on that plane. <gasps> I'm so. Oh, excited. and we have people coming on the plane with us. Oh my gosh! Yes, Rebecca's gonna be there and mm -hmm. say, "Shell, that'll be that'll be amazing." Yeah. And Trent, Trent mm -hmm. will be on the plane too, which is awesome. Yeah. And we're all going. And I mean, we have news that we're gonna be able to stay at the theater after and meet some some stars of the show. <laughs> Of Gutenberg. Yes. Which is the, the only way I'm going to say it. I don't, the musical. Yeah. And I don't care oh, how famous you are. I'm going to say that to your face. So um, I was talking to my dear friend, Karen, and she's like, where are you guys staying? Mm -hmm. And I told her where we're staying. And she's like, oh, my God, that's where we stay every time we go. Oh, my gosh. And yes. And she said, uh, because um, her husband is best friends with Richard, the actor Richard Lewis. And she's <gasps> like, that's where he stays all the time, too, when he's oh, in New York. My, and I was like, how oh, obsessed I am with Richard I'm Lewis, like, by the way. Hillary, I was thinking, I was like, if you know who his best friend is. Michael Harioli. No. Well, I mean, he is close to my Larry friend. David. Oh, well, I know that from, uh, yeah, Curb Your Enthusiasm. But, like, they've known each other since they were 15 years old. Yeah, so that's how um, my friend's husband, like, they so grew up So does he know together. Larry David? I don't know if he knows oh, Larry David. I'm, like, grew two up degrees together. from Larry David, so is what you're telling me. Yes. Oh my god. So isn't that funny? And I was like, if we're there so and hot. Richard Lewis walks by, Hillary's gonna die. <laughs> yeah. I will die. And then so I'm gonna jump on his now, tiny bones yes. body and I'm gonna go, tell me, give me their David's phone number. <laughs> so um yeah, so we're just gonna have to like make our roam the hotel. Yo, yeah. So, you know. Oh, God. I am, I am, you should not have given me this news. Oh, my All God. All the plans are I, out I the was, window. I was so excited to tell you that. I was like, oh, Hillary's going to freak out. <laughs> oh, my God. So, you know, it's funny. Last week, you were like, you were talking about, um, or maybe it was two weeks ago, you were talking about Eddie Vedder, and you're like, oh, he's oh, yeah. the love of my life. And I was laughing when I was listening to him, because I was like, that, that's her love of her life, Eddie Vedder? Yeah. And mine's Larry David. <laughs> That's where we're at here. All right, everybody? All right? That's how fucked up this is. When you're like, oh, he takes his shirt off. I was like, I wonder what Larry did. <laughs> he takes his shirt off. <laughs> uh, uh, hi. <laughs> so fucking funny. <laughs> and breath. So we got, oh speaking God. of old, beautiful people, yep. <laughs> Diane Feinstein passed away yesterday on September 29th. You know Holy uh, shit. I, I was shocked. Can you believe it? After all the conversations <laughs> we've had, after knowing how old she is, knowing how sick she was, I was like, what? Yeah, yeah she's dead. What? She died? This is wild. I texted to you and you're like, yeah. what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy to me. It's insane. And the thing is, um, I, I, and I think I said this to you somewhat in a text, but the thing is, this woman... If she would have retired mm. 15, 20, 20 years ago, and she now died, then, you know, maybe people could talk about her legacy and, you know what I mean? And, and But it's so, to me, so tainted Yeah, I with mean. her refusal to leave. Yeah. And then Pelosi. And, and, and Pelosi, Girl. and I can tell you, the thing that upsets me about Pelosi is like, her daughter, right? Like, I want my daughter to run. And it's like, you don't own the seat. And when the Republicans talk about, oh, the Clinton legacy and all of, like, this is the kind of stuff they're talking, I mean, they do it too with the Bushes and yeah. the Trump administration, I mean, yeah. come on. But why, why is this like a legacy thing? Why does I never, Pelosi, I haven't heard the Pelosi daughter thing before. Yeah. She wants her daughter to take the seat. Well, it's I, like, you don't own that no, seat. No, and this, and I'm sorry, maybe there's someone more qualified and you're holding on just so your daughter can end up in it. Like, that to me is so Undemocratic. Yeah, and also we're not a freaking monarchy. Yeah, and also your kids don't how deserve does, shit. How does Pelosi see her friend Diane Feinstein die in office, and then, by the way, had at least I mean years leading up to this recent yes. illness of people saying you're too, you really need to step down. How does she see that and not retire? How do you run again? It's not necessary. It's not no. you live. You don't even live in an area like you don't represent an area that's 
overly Republican and there's a fear that you would lose the seat. Y'all learn from San Francisco. You're going to get a Democrat in, in office. That doesn't make any sense to me. You should go spend time with your family or lay on a beach or read a book. Go enjoy your life enjoy because your life. What, what you saw with Feinstein, they're already telling Pelosi you're too old to be in office. You want to be wheeled yes. in and yes. not understand what's yeah. happening in a hearing? It's weird. That is the part that taints it. Plus, I mean, well, maybe it's my Twitter. I don't know. But I saw a lot of people going like, you know, she's the longest serving woman in the Senate. That's that's incredible. Okay. But so, also the old, the longest serving man was 100. So can we please like, put that in cares? perspective? And also that's the, the other thing, thing of people to, like to, praising her gun rights activists. Because remember, she served with Harvey Milk. Oh yeah, on but the she thing. did have some. Well, there's lots there's of things some, about her. Questionable there was things. one I will. I'll, Somehow, maybe I'll retweet it from the muck, but there was an um, an intelligence officer who she met with before she she voted to send troops to Iraq, and he laid out this whole thing. He in his tweet he put this whole thing out. He's like, I met with her and I gave her all the information that I had, which showed there were not WMDs in Iraq, right? Surprise. And she was like, Well, you're putting us in a difficult position. And he's like, I don't know what to tell you. This is the information. If you need more conversation, you want to talk about blah blah blah. She's like, I got it. Thank you so much. I have a lot to consider. Goes in like a week later and votes to send troops there. With no evidence. No evidence. So this is somebody who's done a lot of crazy shit. Not yeah. to mention the video of the last a few years ago that I played on the podcast a couple months ago, where a group of children were standing in front of her yes. asking her to do something about climate change, and she's like, "Well, here's a million people elected me, and I'm not going to be told by what to do uh, in this office." And I'm like, "They're children." She was old and out of her fucking mind. Well, and and with Pelosi, like her your husband uh, was attacked. Yeah. Right? Like, and Trump like, mocked that yesterday, by oh, the way. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, like, spend some time with your family. Why continue to put your family at risk? Um, I, I, I don't that, get it. That, I don't that get power, it. it's not what, that feeling but, important is so... Right, it's but so feel important somewhere else. powerful. I know, but they can't. It's, it's wild. And God bless. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank yes, you for your service. But get out. But you could have done this 20 years ago. And now we've got a seat open oh that God. apparently the governor, so Governor Newsom, will come in and, and he'll appoint somebody. He has to. And I, we're screwed you in know, the Senate right now. I was talking to my mom about this yesterday. You know, he, there's, there's, there are many important Democrats running for that seat. Adam Schiff. Katie Porter, he can't appoint one of them because it's kind of tipping the fucking election, right? Like if he puts one of them in, I was wondering about. I don't this. think he can do that. I would like to see him put Katie Porter in. There. I would too, but that doesn't that kind of like then make her then her seats open. Like we we right. really need to make well, sure. Then, and like, he's she's smart. Got the name Hopefully he won't do that because I don't know if you saw him after the Republican debate, but it was in California at the Ronald Reagan Library and the one that was on Wednesday, the second debate. Yeah. And he was in the in the spin room, you know, afterwards where you go in and you start spinning to all the reporters. And he was on Fox News with Hannity and Hannity was trying to give him shit and this motherfucker shut him down every left and right. Ooh. And I, I retweeted one of the videos. I'm like, the Biden administration, this man is selling your work and what you've been doing more than anybody else, clearly, concise, Saying, pushing back on Hannity, like this man is selling your shit. Put him on the campaign trail for yes, Biden. Please. Put him on it. He could do the job for you. You know who else can? All of these young, progressive electeds in the House during that stupid impeachment inquiry this week. The videos coming out with Representative Frost, Ocasio Cortez, uh, Crockett from Texas was amazing. All these videos coming out of these young people with their fucking grasp. Oh, Moskowitz holding that shit Ooh! down, our rep Moskowitz, incredible. That was amazing. They are mocking the shit out of this because there's zero evidence for this inquiry and they're just making sure you know about it. You, those videos also should be playing in a commercial for Biden. Yeah. You need to use these these young people who are defending your old ass out there and show it because it's really, it's all bullshit. But it was so fucking good. It was so good this week. It, it was good. And, I mean, this we have a house mm. that is... Putting people in harm's way, you know, like there's uh, air traffic controllers, like there's so many things, like where people are gonna have to work without money or Ugh. or leave their jobs. Right, and they and, can't. Some of the guys Congress can't. Congress still gets paid. Right. Oh, great video. Hold right? on. Right. Yeah. Congress keep, keep talking. Still gets paid, and it's outrageous that we are going to harm. I mean, this is the party, right? That they're concerned that we want little government. We're fighting for everybody. They don't fight for anybody. They fight for corporate tax breaks and that's it. They don't care 
about the 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 little people and and these people that are going to just continue to vote republican for some stupid you know religious belief that they have or whatever it is it's outrageous to me yeah to, because they're harming themselves mm. they're harming themselves when they don't get their benefits what then? And I mean, and then the military families, like oh my everybody God. is being impacted, right? You're the government that's all about the military, right? But let's just, you know, harm our military family, the people who are fighting for us. Let's right. harm them. Here's a video from Rep Williams, Rep Brandon Williams. He's from New York and he, it's a little, it's like a 40 minute clip, but he basically says, they ask him if he's going to keep his sal keep his pay for, oh, you know, yeah. while during the shutdown. He said, yeah. yeah. yeah and then that. He says that nobody will have sympathy for the workers who yeah. are out with furloughh. Hold on. Yeah, must be nice. Two questions, Chris. I, I'm going to leave it there for the congressman. Will you take pay if the government shuts down? I am honestly not sure how that works. Well, you still get money. The members of Congress get paid. The minority leader Mitch McConnell said so on the floor yesterday. So will you accept that pay? I will. Tell us why. Um, our job does not end in a shutdown. Uh, we don't get to stay home. Uh, we stay there and make it work. Um, I don't know why that rule is in place, but uh, you know, uh, I am not independently wealthy, and uh, we are uh, um, like any other family. Um, so uh, I don't think you're going to find a huge amount of sympathy. Um, you know, for people that have been furloughed or early retirement uh, or laid off or their pension going bankrupt, uh, um, you know, you're not going to find a huge amount of sympathy uh, out there. That's that's I'm, I'm afraid that's just the reality. So, what? so that's yeah. So that's the reality. So what the hell are you talking about? Why can't you have the sympathy? By the way, why, it's your vote that's making this happen. By the way, he's from a very wealthy family. I just want to oh, right please. Now. And second of all, I want to say this too: you don't have sympathy. No, like you don't have sympathy, and neither do your 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 the cohorts that you're scheming with in the house. Like, Y'all don't have sympathy for people who work paycheck yeah. to paycheck and need that money, but. You think the whole world, the, the, in, the rest of the country isn't going to see it that way? We know who's causing the shutdown. We know you're going to continue to get your money. You don't think people who vote in middle class or lower class Americans are going to sympathize with their fellow workers? Are you, are you nuts? What out of touch, out of re fucking reality. Out of, out of reality. Like Shame on you, dude. This is fucking crazy. What a, what an interview also. Mm -hmm. This is what happens when you have a nobody up there who uh thinks he can he can you know talk shit and you're not prepared you were not prepared for that uh i don't know did you watch any of this debate because it was another fucking bomb i mean um, i can't believe my, that this my is... dad and i talked about oh it a my little God. bit i didn't uh, get a chance to see it but, so bad um, so bad i did recently though see a biden ad Oh, where he's using DeSantis right, from that, from that, from that, from that debate, <laughs> and it's really good. It's really it's, good. Like it blames uh, Trump for any, everything, and he's like paid for by the Biden administration. Yeah. he says, you know who's not showing up? Trump's not showing yeah. up, right? And so Biden, yeah, took that head yeah. because I approved this message. Yeah, and I was like, oh fuck, you know, this is the this is the this is the rock in the hard place, which yeah. I don't really feel like it's a rock in a hard place if you really stand in your convictions against Trump and you're running to be president on the Republican ticket. Like Nikki Haley seems to be doing it beautifully, but what else is new? She's a woman. The 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 men have held back for the most part from criticizing Trump because he's 40, 40 points ahead and whoever's supporting him will not support you if you attack him, right? So they've not attacked him. And so they come out this time in the debate and they start attacking him because he's not showing up to debates. Not not to mention the fact that the day before the debate, he was found guilty <laughs> of, lot, of of boosting up what his properties were, the value of his properties this is and, and causing, um, what is it called? Um, it's it's uh, fraud. He yes. was found guilty of fraud by a judge the day before. Nobody brings it up. No. What the fuck? I know. What is going on? That's your what? party. This is your party. Well, Don't you give a fuck about it? But, but I, I feel like why isn't all of this stuff about Trump blasted on the front page of every newspaper? It's, there's too many president things. indicted. President found guilty. Former President Trump, you know? I wish, I wish that if he is sitting in jail that we could strip him. <laughs> 
of that title of president that we could strip him of his secret service. Like, this mm. guy is in jail. Yes. He's going to have, a, imagine a secret service guy. Like, his mm. fucking job is to sit in a jail all day because he's got to babysit this idiot. Not to mention, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I read a whole article. It's fucking insane to me. So there's all these court cases. I think there's five court cases that are, like, now ramping up for him to be involved in next year. It's insane. The amount of security. Because the gag order that uh, that guy, Jack Smith, Ask the judge for to yeah. put a gag order on Trump because which, he goes on which, Truth Social or these but speeches they don't do anything and he, about threatens, it. he threatens people. He threatened that military guy. The, 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 the military guy, General Milley? Yes. This is crazy. He, he crazy. He, was, he basically threatened the man's life. Yeah. He didn't say it directly, and this is how he's going to get away with it. But somebody reading that tweet or whatever they call it on this truth social, yeah, <laughs> is going to go, oh, he's telling me I need to take this guy out. Well, well, yeah. He is unhinged and dangerous. And people who think, like, well, he just says what he means. Like, so, like, that's where we are. I mean, we, I feel like ever since the era of Trump and, and this sort of extreme Republican Party, it is violence after violence after violence. Like just yesterday in Florida, some guy went into a a a uh, car repair shop, mm. shot at the car repair person. That person shot at him. Yeah. They're both dead. <laughs> Open carry. Like, I mean, is, a permitless carry. Yeah, it is constant acts of violence, and for what? Yeah. For what? But the so the amount of threats against the judges, the people in the jury, the the prosecutors has like this guy Jack Smith. The the I, they're paying like a million dollars a month Imagine to keep him being safe on that because jury. of I would what be afraid to be the on threats that, jury. that they're receiving and they're receiving it like you can. This isn't a fucking mystery of where they're like you're saying of where they're getting this where they're getting this uh, information. Yeah, where they're getting this idea to do this, and these people think the people making the threats think. That they are uh, protecting democracy, right? And because that's what? how Trump is. But guess Trump, what? Trump is trying to wrap himself in an American flag, like when, he's a hero. When they're in jail for committing acts of violence, it's not going to be the same kind of jail that the former president is going to find himself in, because he's going to be isolated and protected. He doesn't care about you. No, you're going to spend your life in jail for this idiot who just makes money off of you. Yeah. Um, the last thing I had, because my story is kind of long, but okay. I'm so fucking stoked for it, Ooh. is that Merriam-Webster, you know, every year they add, like, things to the yeah. dictionary? Yeah. So there's a couple things I wanted to tell you they added this year. Chef's kiss. Ooh. Which I thought you would like. Yes. Thirst trap. Oh, God. <laughs> Thirst trap. Yeah. And, um, riz. Riz? You know, like, having riz. Yeah. Yeah. All those that were added. <laughs> I thought Riz was kind of funny because yeah, that seems no, super it, new compared to like Chef's Kiss. Yeah. It's a slang, yeah. you know, but people use the words. Oh my God. Oh. All right. Are you ready? I am ready. So today I will be covering animal hoarder Vicky Kittles. Animal hoarder? Okay. Now, it, like, it's a Tiger King kind of situation? <laughs> similar but on a different fucking level okay so how I came to the story is my daughter was writing a speech for speech class and it was about she had to write about the the big cat law right oh, the one yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. that Carol Baskin yeah was fighting for you know that <laughs> past the, right and the with the help of the Tiger King show because yes. they're like what the hell's going on around we here for right? these and how there's wild animals in neighborhoods that you would never know literally this week they, Lighthouse Point, which is a city just north of us, was chasing a monkey down the street that had escaped from someone's house, like a spider monkey or something. But still, what, like, what there's animals doing? everywhere you don't even okay, fucking know. I know. Right? And, and the thing is, I mean, look at our, in Florida, we have an iguana oh my God. nightmare. We have a boa constrictor nightmare because there people was, get these exotic yeah. pets. And they're like, I don't want it anymore. I know. I'll just let it go free. And there's no... It's an invasive species, both of the boa and, and the, the iguana, because they don't have a natural predator in Florida. And so now they're running rampant yeah. through our states. And like in the Everglades, like they, they are training people to go and kill these snakes. Yeah. It well, is the, insane. I have, iguanas, I have iguanas that lay out by my pool more Ugh. than I do. And the iguanas and they are the size so of, gross. It's, they're disgusting. And they're the size Ugh. of a small fucking dog. Like, I'm not kidding. I could put oh, a no, leash on these motherfuckers them, No, some of them, them are huge. They're huge. Huge. And they're, like, thick. 
And the, you know, like the ones that are like thick with the orange. No, no, please oh, stop. Yeah. Please stop. I'm going to throw up. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so I said to her, you know, when I was a kid in my neighborhood, there was a hoarder named Vicky Kittles. What? And my daughter's like, what? I'm like, she, I said, they pulled all kinds of animals out of her house. I will never forget it. It's like one of those things that's tattooed. I've that name, never heard I will of never forget that name because it was the craziest thing ever. And since I, so I said, let me look her up. And I looked her up and I was like, oh, like what happened after she left my neighborhood gets wild. And the reason I'm covering her and besides the fact that it's a crazy story is that they had to create laws because of her. Oh, I love and it. And so I was let's like, oh, it. Hey, let's this do is it. fucking muck. Yes. So I can create, now that I know that they did this, I'm going to do this. So I want to also mention that right up the fr up front is that um, I got... The majority of this information, there's all, all a bunch of articles that I read about her since she left and and where she was, where she went and where she was covered when she got caught every time. So there's a lot of articles in our notes. I read these articles at all the different places that she was picked up, but the majority of my information, which was like an incredible timeline of where she was and where she came from, was from the Animal League Defense Fund. They have a whole article about her and they helped in the assistance of getting her prosecuted because she, nobody could tie this woman down basically legally. And so they she? really like swooped in and was like keeping track of her, it seemed like, and trying to help, you know, uh, the main thing you'll hear in the thread of the story is that the fact, besides the fact that she's, there's some mental illness things happening clearly, uh, is that it's animals are the victims. And so these cases weren't priority and they were kind oh. of, you know what I mean? And it was, a, it, it was, it's I horrible, but I just understand people that, this, that, that, that do this. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious to so see. So this Animal League Defense Fund how exists it started. because of, it's like the ACLU for animals almost, yes. right? Like to come Aww. in and like help these animals. And so they're like angels. And I got a lot of information from them. So a little bit about her background, Vicki Kittles. Her family's from Chicago. They moved to South Florida after her brother Rex was diagnosed with rheumatic fever. The doctor suggested that a warmer climate would be better for his health. And so the family, including Vicki, her brother Rex, her mom Jean, and her stepdad Frank Sullivan moved to Wilton Manors, Florida, which is where I'm this from. This is wild. They got Wilt Manors. What's up? We love Wilt Hometown, Manors. bitch. Uh, eventually, <laughs> they left the house because of, uh, the Frank left the house. So the stepdad's like, Vicky's nuts. I'm fucking out, right? Like, her erratic behavior was insane. He's like, I can't live here. And he, like, moved to another house. So Vicky's house was across the street from my mother, three houses what? down. What? Okay, so on my street. Oh, this is why you know yeah, this. Yes. Yeah. Across the street from my mother, three houses so down. So this happened, like, when you were living in that house? Yes. 1985, I was seven years old, and I will never forget it. Okay, we're going to get into what happens there, but it's wild. So according to the Orlando Sentinel, which is the only one I could find, like the part, the only article I could find about any part of this part of Vicky's life, uh, Carol Kittles, who is Rex's wife, he moves out, he gets married. Okay. So Carol Kittles, they were living in Miami, and she told the Orlando Sentinel that, Vicky, quote, Vicky was violent, she was argumentative, dom domineering, and abusive. Um, end quote. People who knew Vicky said she was ex eccentric and that she would always rescue injured wildlife and wanted to be a veterinarian. Her mom, Jean, was always concerned about her behavior but was supportive of her. Uh, Rex tried to get his mom to leave the house, but Jean insisted that she could get Vicky on her feet and then everything will be fine. Uh -oh. So, you know, she loves her daughter very much, which we oh, all yeah. do. But, and like, of course, clearly, you're help your child. Yes. Yeah. But over time, Vicky started bringing more and more animals into the house, right? So now it's just her and her mom living in this house, and she's bringing all these animals. And she was also isolating Jean from the son, Rex. Like, she, like she didn't want them talking. She didn't want them coming to the house. Oh. You know, she's just, you know, keeping yeah. everything in. And I think she didn't want people there because the animal, it was insane what was happening in this house. Okay. And, and is it, well, I mean, you're going to get into it, but is it like, oh, I found, you know, because I used to, like, rescue, I didn't yeah. rescue turtles, but, like, when I used to drive, there was a certain road I used to go on. Um, when I used to tutor many, many years ago, and there was always turtles crossing the road, and I would stop my car, I would stop traffic, I would pick up the turtle, and I'd put it back so it wouldn't get smashed. Yeah. You know, like... Um, that's not what this is. No. This is like she either bringing the turtle home. It's, yeah. It's like finding animals, but then in another case, which we'll see later on, she'll go and adopt 10 dogs, and be like, I'm going to give them all homes, and the shelter's like, all right. Yeah, but, but she then yeah. brings them back and, like, doesn't uh, do that. Oh, yeah. You, oh, how are you having 10 dogs in the house? Oh, Jesus. Girl. That's the not even. Uh -oh, uh -oh. I can't wait to <laughs> so see. So okay. for hoarding of animals is a mental health issue, right? And so there's different characteristics that go along with this. And some of them are they're di this person's difficult or problem problematic to deal with. They acquire animals purely to serve their own needs. They tend to be sociopathic disorder, which means oh. they, 
you know, can convince you that they care about you, but really they don't give a fuck. Like there's nothing, there's nothing inside that they but care about. How does the animal connect to that then? So they, well, because she thinks she's the hero, but really, but she's uh, not even, but she doesn't even show care to these animals. Like she doesn't feed them. She doesn't give them water. Like they starve to oh, death. Like no. she, but she thinks she's so the she's, only one who can take care of them. So she's not like, I'm legitimately trying to rescue no, and save. No, oh, no. She's, she can't even see with her eyes that these animals are sick and dying because she thinks she's the savior and oh nobody else God. can take care of them. Is, is it like Munchauser, but with dogs? Yes, yes. It's, that's exactly that part. She lacks empathy for people or animals. They tend to have extreme denial about the situation, rejects outside authority from leg that have legitimate concerns, very manipulative and cunning, and uh, lacks guilt or remorse. Those are just some of the things. Jesus. So she has been particularly exceptional in her ability to manipulate good Samaritans, unsuspecting veterinarians, and the legal system. And she was, you know, she would be like, oh, I gotta take care of this animal. She would get herself in situations with people who had a lot of money and cared about animals. And she's like, I have all these animals. I'm taking care of them by myself. And they give her thousands of dollars. Wow. She was able so, oh, to, so this is her, her, her plan. Just, but to not to money. like live high on the, ho on the hog. Like, I don't know what she was doing with that money, but it wasn't taking care of animals, but it was just like her way to survive. Wow. But she wasn't living like a lavish lifestyle or anything like that, you know? Okay. So her first arrest for animal abuse was in May, 19, 1985. The neighbors, who I knew, in Walton Manors called the police and complained of stench and noise coming from animals at the house. When the police arrived, neighbors told them that she had pointed a gun at them, which I remember all of this. She was later charged with aggravated assault. When neighbors gave a sworn statement they, uh, that they had seen Kittles punch one dog and throw another against the wall, what? authorities went into the home and discovered 35 dogs, three cats, and two horses living in the home. No, no. No. This is my memory. Wait. This is my memory, okay? Wait. Okay, let me tell no. you about Vicky Kittles. Hold okay. on. Okay, I'm, I'm so confused. We would ride our bikes all over the neighborhood, right? Like we were, you know, 1985, bitch. We were high on the hall with those damn bikes. We were I living. We were like love ET, this story so right? Much. Yeah. So we'd be. You got your banana. Bitch, your banana yes, banana. banana yes, yes. We were living it. it. Except when we had to pass that house. Now, if I went to my friend Erica's house, it was that way, which means I had to go past Vicky Kittles' house or I'd take the long way home because I did not want. We were terrified. To it, ride our bikes. Because the dogs were wild? But, well, first of all, it smelled really bad. But also, oh. if she was outside or she saw... Like, my mom told me this story this week. They, we had wild ducks because we lived kind of near canals. And so there was ducks walking right. around the neighborhood all the time. One time, there was this group of ducks walking by our house. And we stopped to, like, you know, yeah. talk to the ducks. She came running out of the house and started screaming at us to stay away from her ducks. Don't touch the ducks. Like... I saw a picture of her in an article. I was triggered, bitch. Like I go, when my mom told me that, I go, oh my God, now I oh remember. Like she was fucking insane. <laughs> but I will never forget the day we were all outside of our house watching the, because the police were coming. The news vans were there. I stood on my mom's driveway. I was seven years old looking down the street when they pulled a horse out of this <laughs> house. I, my brain couldn't com compute what was happening. I was like, what? And my mom said to me, she came home from work that day, my brother, who was five, right, was like, horsey, mommy. Horsey. <laughs> my mom's like, what the fuck is this kid talking about? I was like, they pulled a horse out of Vicky Kittle's house. You know, like, how, how is crazy? First of all, how does a horse even, two? She had two. And I how remember. Did two horses, 35 uh, dogs? 35 dogs. 35 dogs, two horses, and a cat? Three, three cats. And three cats. How? Where like every room must just be floor, yeah, it's floors disgusting. Of animal, and, and then in the backyard, where's the horse shitting? Like, yeah, she had. <gasps> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, are the horses even mal? Are they malnourished? Oh yeah, everybody's malnourished. Everybody. Oh my, but how do you sleep in that? Oh, no, she, and no, no, no. <sighs> That's, that's what I mean. There's this denial of, like, what's happening. And this never ends. This is, like, repeated behavior and over and over And this is the again. first time. This is the first time. Oh, so, God. Kittles explained the horses were inside to prevent them from being poisoned by her enemies. She was charged with aggravated uh, assault for pointing the gun at her neighbor, cruelty to animals, and a violation of a local ordinance for keeping horses in a residential area. <laughs> she fled before the trial, <gasps> leaving in a trailer with the animals and her mother. In 1987, about a year and a half later, Rex Kittles died. So, the son. Um, How did he? Oh, because he had that disease? He, yeah, he was ill. Like, I, I, So, this is Vicky's brother, right? So, his wife, Carol, wants to find his family. Like, 
They don't know where the fuck these two are. And she wants to find his mother and say, right. your, son your son died, died yeah. you know? So, and of course, she also said in the paper that she wanted to check on Jean because she was worried. They were always worried about her being at that house. So she hires a private investigator and to find Kittles. And he does. He finds her in Manatee County in September 1987. So this is two years later. And they're, Manatee, Manatee County is kind of in the northwest section of Florida on yeah. the coast. Um, Jean Sullivan, the mother, was not with Vicky and had last been seen at a campground in February, living out of the trailer and sleeping on the ground beside a campfire. So this the old mother. woman. Yeah. So that's what, that's Vicky's claim. I haven't seen her. Yeah, Vicky's, well, Vicky, t she does have a story about where she is, but. But, and, but no one has seen the mom? No one has seen the mom <gasps> since. Does she kill No her? one knows where the fuck this oh, mother is. no. Okay. Oh, this is she so law enforcement to officers or the mom died from all this something shit. happened. Oh no. Law enforcement officers have still today never been able to ascertain Sullivan's whereabouts since the sighting. And this is from a, this Orlando Sentinel article. Vicky, so they had been moving around, right? She'd she'd plop this trailer somewhere and they'd can't like they'd squat there until someone's like, get the fuck out of here. So Vicky and Jean had parked their van in a rural area in Manatee County near the house of a construction worker whose name was William Woods and his girlfriend April. Woods would later tell private investigator Kent Gilpin about bizarre events involving Vicky. The oh, couple never oh saw Vicky's God. elderly companion leave the <gasps> van. They were unable to positively identify the woman as Jean Sullivan, but clearly it probably was. Right, I mean, right. come on. The old woman was confined, confined to the van's front passenger seat. So this is, this is elderly abuse. Oh, abuse. come on. The one constant in her life appeared to be a tiny black and white television emitting a glow that Woods and his girlfriend saw at all hours. Oh, this Vicky's is creepy. When are, uh, okay, who's making the movie yeah, on this? This is crazy. Because this is, this is so insane. Yeah. It gets crazier. This is not even the, this is the beginning. Vicky's dogs were tied in Woods' front yard with the most vicious kept closest to the van. Carol Kittles uh, believes, this is the, the husband, the, the daughter-in-law, daughter, daughter believes that this was done so you couldn't get near the van or so that Jean and the van could not get out. Some of the dogs were unhealthy. Quote, according to April, when a dog died, Vicky would take the animal and throw it on top of the van and later feed portions of it to the other dogs, <gasps> says Gilpin. April asked Vicky to bury her dead dog. This is the girl that lives near there, right? Quote, Vicky said she would never do that even to herself, Carol says. She thought life would go back, to, should go back to life. That feeding it back to the dogs was the way she wanted to go as well when she died, end quote. Now, where's his mother? You hear what I'm saying? Oh, God. When oh, the old woman no. vanished, Woods and his girlfriend <gasps> asked Vicky she about fed, her whereabouts. She fed her mother to the According dogs. to April, Vicky explained, this is, this is Vicky's explanation that she thinks makes sense. Right? This is who we're dealing with. According to April, Vicky explained that she had driven her mother to a convenience store where an older couple offered to take Jean off Vicky's hands and Vicky agreed. Uh, no. She fed her mother to the dogs. Now, I know... She fed her mom to like, the dogs. There's an episode... Allegedly. There's a great show on, H, on, on Netflix. I forgot what it's called, but it's like Missing Persons or something. And there's a, the first episode is a woman who's living with her son. And the neighbors all think the mother's being abused, blah, 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 blah. The mother finally escapes one day. And somebody starts reporting her missing. And the cops, the detective finally find her, but she says to them, I don't want my son to know where I am. So is it possible that Vicky's mother said to this couple, like, yo, like, get, no. SOS, no. while they're at the fucking Circle K? No. And the couple was like, come with us? Is no. it possible? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, maybe. Because at this point, Vicky's 40, 46 if, years old. So yeah, the mother, so let's say the mother's in her 60s. In her 60s. Like, it's possible. Maybe, but if she hasn't been well taken care of and yeah. is this disheveled woman, yeah, I would say, let me call someone, let me do, you know, I yeah. would just be like, I got your mom, bye, and yeah. never speak to you. That doesn't make sense. Also, she doesn't have to go on the road with her. Like, what are you doing? Why are you yeah. doing this? Like, she's finally gone. Let her leave with the no, animals and clean that fucking house she up. She has, she did something to her, because if she was never allowed to leave, yeah. she can't get past the dogs. Why would she have her wandering the Circle K? That doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah. She fed that woman to the dogs, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. So April speculates that the old woman died near the house where the van was parked. Meanwhile, Gilpin, who's a, the private investigator, and Carol Kittles believe that Vicky had been picking up Jean's social security checks in Naples while the woman wow. women were on the lam. While uh, when Jean disappeared, her social security checks were returned to the Social Security Administration. So she never went and picked up the checks after the mother went missing. 
Right. When authorities arrested Kittles, um, because you know the guy found her and called the cops, right? When they arrested Kittles on outstanding charges of animal cruelty, aggravated assault, and grand theft, they discovered more than 40 dogs and cats she was keeping in various makeshift kennels. Nine dogs in a van, four dogs in the back of a station wagon, and several dogs and cats in a shed. She then spent a few months in Broward County Jail awaiting trial. She was acquitted of the aggravated assault charge, but convicted of battery for attacking a jail guard while uh, after her arrest. <laughs> she started beating up the guy. She was also convicted of a misdemeanor for keeping horses at her home, but the judge cited no proof that the animals lacked exercise or fresh air. So Kittles was sentenced to jail time, a fine, or community service. So nothing. Nothing. Right? Wow. It's also been two years since it happened, and it's, you know, these courts get backed up, and they're yeah. like, get this lady the fuck out yeah. of here, right? So from Florida, Vicki went to Mississippi, where she convinced some good-hearted souls that she would save scores of animals by taking them to a no-kill shelter in Colorado. So from Mississippi, she fled to Colorado, where she once again claimed persecution. She left a wake of well-meaning vets with unpaid bills and sponsors, <gasps> whom she turned on when they failed to give her everything she wanted. Oh, my God. From Colorado in the late 1980s, she traveled to rural Washington, where she and her dogs were delivered by a semi-truck. She was successful. What? She was. She probably a semi. Could you imagine a dog? Could you imagine she's hitchhiking and like somebody pulls over and she's like, uh, "Can yeah. you open up the back?" Because I got a hundred fucking dogs. I gotta take with me the fucking or this Washington. Is, I don't even understand this story. I don't understand it. I I'm so confused, girl. She's traveling with the dogs. Like that's the thing. Like traveling with one dog is so hard. Yeah. Traveling with thirty five dogs and a horse. Like what? Girl. She, uh, the horses are gone. The horses I are know, gone. I know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the horses were malnourished. I mean, the, all these animals are, like, sick as fuck. She was successful in co um, conning some wealthy backers to send her $15,000, which she used to buy a school bus that became her home and oh. the prison for over 100 dogs. She then accused her benefactors of being in on a government plot to oh. poison her dogs, and that relationship went sour. So then in April 1993, animal control officers had been called to a property in rural Oregon by a neighbor who reported many dogs barking from inside a school bus. <laughs> Authorities it's found- be hot and gross. You can't even move in a school bus. Can you imagine how disgusting that fucking smells? Can you even- know, She won't I let mean, them out of the school bus. Oh, but just imagine the dogs themselves. No, no, like, no. It's fucking it's horrifying. Sad. It's so And dogs horrible. are so yeah. affectionate. Yes. They need so much attention. Like my dog the other day. Oh, God, and sometimes Teddy. they're like so needy. And I don't know. He's been very exceptionally needy recently. And the other day, like- he just, he just, I mean, he would not stop with his nose. Like, he's just, like, begging me to pet him and hold him and cuddle him. Which you love. Which I love. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> Don't make yourself like she's bothered no, by it. She fucking no, no, loves no, it. No, 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 I love that dog so much. And I, I mean, I cuddle with him. I come home from work. I, I As soon as he sees me, he rolls, and I cuddle on the floor with him, and I let him out. Like, they need that affection. Yeah, no. And to have these poor dogs, like, they're ugh. just in there with no... Ugh. It's really fucking sad. It's sad. The whole it's thing is really sad. really mean. So authorities found Kittles, who was using the alias Susan Dietrich, living in an old school bus with 116 dogs, four cats, and two no. chickens. <laughs> Observers. <laughs> in a school you bus. The chickens are looking around. They're like, how the You're fuck? You're telling me in one school bus. Here? In one school bus. Yeah. There's 116 dogs. Yeah. How many cats? Four. Four. She doesn't like the cats. Yeah, she's so not a big fan. Like, she'll take a cat. Well, because those cats are like, bye. Yeah. Like, they're not sticking <laughs> around for this. Cats dogs are like, a little too dumb. Cats will scratch your yeah. ass. Yeah. Dogs? And the chickens are like, what in the fuck just happened? How the fuck did we how fly they, into how, this? How did we fly out of this fucking place? How did 118 dogs not eat the chickens? Like, what? why aren't they like, I'm fucking starving? Because there's in two cages. In the bus? Yes. <gasps> oh, I thought maybe they're running free honey, in the bus. No, honey. Officers observed no. one dog having se severe seizures while Kittles tried to hold and medicate the dog and the other dogs on the bus were audibly fighting. Oh According to the God. animal control officer's report, Kittles yelled abusively to the animals to, quote, shut up or die. Also, quote, do you want to die? And, quote, I'll kill you, end quote. She brought out another dog who was having also having seizures. She explained the seizures by claiming that people who had conspired against her when she was living in Washington had poisoned the dogs. She She's also, poisoning them. Yeah. She also explained that she never let the dogs off the bus because she didn't want them to get fleas. Kittles was arrested on animal charges of animal neglect. After being placed in the backseat of a patrol car, she began kicking out the window, bending the window frame, and forcing a deputy what? to put her in leg in leg irons and transport her to the jail, 
which where she initially was booked under her alias because they didn't know, you know, that she was arrested for this before. <laughs> Officers boarded the filthy bus to find animals. Oh, girl. <sighs> Caked in urine, <gasps> feces, and suffering from starvation, dehydration, oh and parasites, including <gasps> heartworm. Several doll animals were found dead. Oh, my God. So, you know, it's like this. Oh, just, and, then, and they're living in there. It's a fucked up scene, but she thinks it's normal. She no, thinks it's normal, man. so you know there's something she fucked. needs help. Many dogs hopefully were observed. They, hopefully they like baker acted her or something to get her some help. Tina, you're so positive, but this is the muck bitch. We don't play like this. Okay. Many dogs were observed with old fight wounds as well as fresh fight wounds. Some because then they're in cages together. Yeah. Some had bleeding sores on their bodies or mouths. One was missing an eye. What? One had a bleeding torn ear. Four cats were in a homemade wire cage. There was. No food or water on the bus. This She's is starving wild. them to death. Officers impounded all of the animals. The dog who was having seizures was transported directly to a veterinarian who, where the dog later died. Uh, a a necropi necropsy, you know, where they do an autopsy yeah. after they're dead, revealed no food in the dog's system nor any body fat whatsoever, <gasps> including indicating prolonged starvation. At a court hearing, Kittles pleaded not guilty to the charges, claiming she was saving the dogs from euthanasia. She was then able to convince... The judge to bar medical treatment for the animals. Okay? The order resulted in deaths for many dogs from heartworm and other diseases. She refused to surrender any of the animals for permanent adoption or foster care. She was released and, of course, fucking took off. She was found in Washington State a year later. Extradition, extradition proceedings took three months. It's literally like across a river. This is insane. In December 1994, her trial for animal neglect began in Oregon. The trial lasted five weeks and cost the county $150,000. The Animal League Defense Fund, who I mentioned earlier, yeah. provided a ton of free legal research to aid the prosecution against Kittles. Prosecutor Joshua Marquis described the trial as, quote, In a trial that should have taken two days, Kittles berated the judge, the DA, the witnesses, the jurors, and the audience, and only later in the trial was finally sentenced to spend a total of 71 days in jail. That's for it? For contempt of court, because she was That's acting it? like a fool in court. Kittles but, but used... What about, but what about, like, the charges? No. Kittles used every artifice available to endlessly question witnesses about irrelevant material, and when her turn came to give her side, she talked steadily for two and a half days, end quote. So she's wearing them wow. out. She wore them out. Here are some of the things she was doing during the trial. She fired seven court-appointed attorneys, eventually representing herself. She filed hundreds of self-styled legal motions, had four judges remove themselves from the case, maintained control of the uh, confiscated dogs, of, like I said, by the means of the order she won to withhold treatment from the animals. So this, in Oregon, is where she this law gets created because all of the shit she's doing, they didn't have anything that existed that could take the dogs from right. her, that could you know, enforce these things. Nothing existed. And so because of these shenanigans, that's where this law comes from, which oh, we'll get into. God. So finally in January 1995, after two hours of deliberation, the jury unanimously convicted her of 42 counts of animal neglect in the first degree. She was sentenced to four months in jail in addition to the 71 days for contempt, five years su unsupervised probation. Well, what the hell is that? A psychiatric exam. I mean, it's stupid. Yeah. A psychiatric exam. Avoid, and she was told she had to avoid contact with animals and any person who would, would help her adopt animals. So this is something that was funny to me as part of this also. During her incarceration in that 71 days, or the, the five. This is 10 years. Yeah. It started in 1985 and here yeah, we are. Here we are. She's finally later. serving some time. But yeah. during her incarceration, one fellow inmate begged to be sent to the state's prison rather than suffer another night in the cell with Kittles. Because <laughs> she was fucking insane. The lady's like, get me the, I'd rather go to the prison. Please send me to the high maximum security prison and wow. get me the fuck out of this jail. Wow. <laughs> Um, also, wow. also, she chose to serve two more months in jail instead of going to counseling, which they allowed her to do. Instead no, of getting the no, fucking exam and maybe help. some medication to get her back down the fucking earth, right? This is 1995. Like, we're still not quite there with the mental health. Yeah, you know so I mean? she left in the jail in November 1995. <clears throat> and, of course, she was ordered to not get more animals. But because her probation was unsupervised, <laughs> that requirement wasn't monitored. I mean, this is the stupidest thing. You would think that you would supervise because all you'd have to do is walk up and smell her house. And yeah. you would know that Which she's not an animal. Exactly what happened. <laughs> so... We catch, we catch back up with uh, Vicky in August of 1996. She moved into a trailer owned by a man named Ed Deppenbrock in Carbon County, Wyoming. 
She, by the way, how did she find this guy? I don't know, but Wyoming is such a cool looking word. Mm -hmm. Every time I was typing it, I was like, damn, this fucking word is cool <laughs> as fuck. It looks so cool. Anyway, she began using the alias Renee Deppenbrock. Renee is her middle name. Since, uh, since being released from jail, she adopted over 70 dogs from the Rollins Animal Shelter, claiming she would find homes from them, but of course, brought them back to her trailer. Okay, but so, so shouldn't there be some due diligence from the shelter to say... Yes, what is this? What, what are you, but this is a lot of dogs. Who are they going? But, we haven't been able to get rid of these 70 dogs. How are you doing it? But also Who remember... Who did they go to? What, yeah. like, have something. You, the, the paperwork you have to fill out to adopt an animal oh is God. laughing. And it's expensive. Yeah, but also, well, so either they're inundated by these dogs, but also remember, she's a sociopath. Yeah. So she's able she's to totally come like, across as a saint. Yeah. And she's really insane, right? Wow. Yeah. So um, police were called by neighbors a couple of times, but they had no probable cause to go inside the trailer, except that they did always note the strong stench. Oh, In March 1997, the owner of the property where the trailer was parked took civil action for non-payment of rent. <laughs> Ed Deppenbrock had not been seen since the fall. This is the guy she's running the trailer Nobody from. knows. This is the guy she was living in the trailer with. Oh, yeah. He, so he's back to the dogs, too. I mean, nobody this knows who this guy people. is. This is two people. Oh, no, hello. No. She, hello. She has fed the... She, I mean, what the fuck? Allegedly. Where is this guy? She was uh, evicted from the property along with 80 dogs and 40 cats. Meanwhile, she was still under the Oregon order to not possess any animals, but the Oregon authorities did not pursue extradition for the violation because... You know, in my opinion, a major reason why she got away with this for so long is besi besides being incredibly irritating, uh, was the fact that she, these victims were animals. That's how I feel, right? right. It was more of a hassle for the courts to deal with her. And uh, I believe the animals are less of a priority than like other cases, this is which is awful. unfortunate. No, it's unfortunate because I mean, how these are like upwards of a thousand dogs at this point, right? Like we're getting close. Well, I mean, in 10 years, how many dogs died? How yeah. many dogs suffered? How many dogs... I mean, the pain inflicted on yes. these animals. Yes, yeah. Un uh, unnecessary. Oh, God. Um, it was, uh, so she moved the trailer to another property where she had no permission from the owner to be there, and she was immediately ordered to vacate that property. She left behind 74 dogs that were later adopted out. The next day, she was stopped by a deputy because her vehicle was obst had obstructed views. <laughs> so the cop pulls her over because she can't see out. But she had five dogs, 40 cats, and a rabbit living in the car. 40 cats? Yeah. So now she's flipped. She's flipped the script <laughs> on us. We thought she hated cats. Yeah. Now she's helped. They're probably cats. easier to transport, right? Maybe. Yeah. Jeez. She was arrested for two traffic violations, the obstructed view, but also she didn't have a driver's license. The animals were taken to a vet who found that they were all malnourished. Some had respiratory infections and some had mites, causing them to pull out their own hair and skin. Oh, Authorities had to destroy all the animals. <gasps> it's fucked up. Now the prosecutor in Carbon County added the misdemeanor animal cruelty to her charges, like with, with the traffic violations. The Animal League Defense Fund again added their free legal services to help the prosecutor because now this bitch is on their radar. And then we're, we're looking at, we're going to yeah. get this woman. This league is like, fuck you, right? They must be like, what is yeah. going on? Yeah. And they're probably like, here's Sounding... her file from yeah. Oregon. Here's her shit from Florida, right? Wow. Six months later, the prosecutor dropped charges against Kittles, saying he would just as soon let her sound off somewhere else. Wow. She had spent court hearings ranting and raving and accusing everyone around her of conspiracies. The prosecutor said that given Kittle's history, he feared a long, expensive trial and said, quote, I held out little hope based on how she behaved that the trial would have been short. It could have lasted for, for days. I don't want to burn up the jury pool on cases like that, end quote. So again, like you're right, like it's to them, it's a waste of time. Yeah. It doesn't deal with another human being. Yeah. So who cares? Like, yeah. And she's, and, and also there's that. And fact they know of she's going to waste the, the court's time yeah. and money. And she, yeah. Uh, she moved to Sweetwater County, Wyoming, and there she faced court proceedings for felony property destruction and misdemeanor criminal trespass began. Like, again, she's moving on to property she doesn't belong on. And as in Oregon, the proceedings were characterized by Kittle's manipulations. Um, such as seeking the judge's removal, requesting to postpone the trial, and requesting to subpoena all media stories relating to her case. The judge ordered Kittles to submit to a mental evaluation at the state hospital, but contrary to the prosecu prosecutor's request to have her transported there by law enforcement, the judge allowed her to go to the hospital by herself, which she never did. <laughs> 
I mean, why do they trust her? I don't know. But why? She, if you, clearly, she's someone who is not stable. Yeah. And if you're asking, and you her, can't trust someone who's not stable to go and get help when they don't think there's anything wrong with right. them. Right. And also, and you, if you think everyone's out to get you, you're not going to be like, let me go to yeah. the hospital. Like, and you clearly see she's no Ill. Sense. Like, someone take her immediately. Like, they're not doing her any favors either mm-hmm. by letting her go all the time. This it's is true. Fucking she's insane. harming herself. Yeah. You're right. So, uh, the court proceedings lasted for eight months. The waiting went on for two years and was finally dismissed because she never went to this thing <laughs> to go get the evaluation. So they finally were like, fuck it, let it go. In July 2001, Vicky convinced a woman into letting her park a camping trailer with 48 cats on the property for only a couple of weeks. The following April, <gasps> April 2002, she finally removed the trailer from the property. A month later, Laramie County Sheriff impounded the trailer and found it to have a- inadequate ventilation. There were Cheerios mixed with cat food in their dishes, and many caged cats had no access to water. Oh my god. The deputies took the 48 cats to the Cheyenne Animal Shelter where all of the cats were found to have ear mites. Some had infected sores. One had a respiratory infection. One showed evidence of self-mutilation. And one was euthanized because of advanced ringworm. Oh. Although Kittles was living out of her car, she had accumulated six horses, which she kept on someone's property, until the owner objected and tied them to a fence along the road. This How person even do doesn't you give a fuck. get... You just... Horses are expensive. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. So how do you accumulate? I think she's convincing people about it. How? But how? Like, I mean, maybe, but she's homeless. I, I don't know what her her appearance is. Oh God, it's got to be. You know what I mean? I like, mean. if she's living with these animals, she's, there's got to be some kind of smell. There's got to be Ugh. a little bit of an aroma oh, God. coming from her. Oh my God! Wafting off of her clothes. Oh. Why would someone go? I know. Let me just give you a horse. Maybe she stole them. Maybe she's buying them and like using social security. Who knows? But where is this money coming from? I don't know. But the police drove by. And the amount of food that you need to take care of a horse. Then she's not feeding them though. And so then now this guy's like, now I have six horses on my property. No one's feeding them. I'm not going to feed them. So he puts them outside. Yeah. And the cops drove by and I'm like, what the fuck? And they confiscate the horses, right? Because they don't know why are they tied to what's going on. Veterinarians declare that the horses were in marginal health. Their ribs were showing. One had an open wound on her head. On, um, and was missing the bottom row of teeth. <gasps> One had hair on his belly, a sign of malnutrition. One had deformed legs that could have been <gasps> surgically corrected if the horse had received medical treatment oh, for the no. condition before he was a year old. K- Kittles was ticketed for misdemeanor livestock at large. During the proceedings, Kittles filed civil suits against various people connected with the seizure of the horses. She accused authorities of stealing or killing the fowl of one of the horses who a veterinarian determined had never been pregnant. In July 2002, at a court hearing for the confinement of 48 cats in a trailer, Kittles filed a civil complaint against the shelter accusing the staff of of abusing the seized cats, amputating the legs of some of the cats, gouging out their eyes, and selling them for experimentation. Oh my goodness. The cost of boarding and providing veterinary care for the cats that she like was living in that trailer was estimated at twenty thousand dollars i can't imagine i mean because all of the medication yeah the doctor's bills the 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 boarding of these animals yeah. they're just trying to take care of them and like adopt them out for wow. you because you're an asshole wow in august 2002 wow. identifying herself as renee kittles she called the aldf this animal league defense fund can you imagine no in a, she called their office to demand help from a lawyer. No! To with her complaints about the Laramie County authorities. As no! If, as if she's the good guy. No! And they're like, they're what? Like, Wait they're a like, minute, lady. Renee Kittles, bitch, we know who this is. Hit record on that, on that phone call, right? Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> Her ranting ranged from deriding the ALDF to demanding help and ended with threats of retribution if an attorney would not assist her. In January 2003... That is wild to me. So yeah. She, doesn't she even, thinks she's so, the victim. But she doesn't realize that in her prior court cases that that very organization was providing yeah. the information to help prosecute her. Yeah. Yeah, she's really fucked up. In January 2003, <laughs> in circuit court, Kittles represented herself in two trials. Big mistake. A uh, jury found her guilty of misdemeanor breach of the peace. She also convicted. She was also convicted of my other minor charges: eight counts of failure to vaccinate, and one count of livestock at large, and one count of no auto insurance. The judge sentenced her to fifteen days in jail, suspended, and a two hundred and thirty dollars fine. Wow. Yeah. I don't. It, 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 I don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand. Like, I mean, I get it. I get the first time. Okay, let's let this lady go. But now you have a ten over ten year. 
close yeah. to a 15 year record of death and pain yeah and suffering yeah. on animals and you're not doing anything like that is messed up i know that is messed up like clearly she is a danger to and i mean she's not a danger to society to say but animals are part of our society of course it's terrible mm. so the kittle spill <laughs> Here we are. In the aftermath of the costly 21-month case in Oregon in which the animal victims in custody during the course of the lengthy court proceedings continued to suffer and die at the whim of the abuser, ALDF was determined to strengthen state animal protection laws. ALDF uh, attorney member Pamela Frasch did extensive legal research and drafted the Kittles Bill, which elevated aggravated animal abuse from a misdemeanor to a felony Ooh. and allowed shelters to provide veterinary care to impounded animals and to move them from temporary shelters to foster homes. Due to the concerted efforts of the Animal League Defense Fund and animal advocates across the state to garner support of the bill, Oregon legislators passed the bill. It was signed by the governor and became effective in September 1995. Oh, Incredible. God. Another Oregon bill that was passed in that same session allowed courts to order forfeiture of abused animals prior to the disposition of a criminal case, which is when she convinced that judge to not take right. care of the animals. And this, in this case, if you are before you're even there's a case is is in court, they can take all the animals away Good. from that person and they treat should. them. Yeah. They should. So where is she now? How because guess what? Like, how... 2003 is the last I can see. I, I can't find any other info after 2006. Ooh. Like, I don't know. And right now, she'd be 82 years old. So it's possible she's still alive. It is. I can't Maybe find she's... anything about her. She's got to be in a home or yeah. something. I mean, there's no other articles. So who, wow. who knows what happened to her? This story needs to be made into a documentary. Oh, my God. I, like, and I'll, I'll I want to play it. myself. Yeah, I'll <laughs> As a little girl. As a little girl. With a little pigtail. Yeah, I can pull off seven, I think. I think you could pull yeah, off the bike. Years out, off I think that. you could pull off the bike with oh, the yeah. big banana handles. Yeah. Like, you would be so cute. Yeah. Wow. Can you believe this? Vicky Kittles. Wow. Uh, yeah. This I also like looked wild. up Carol Carol Kittles. I was seeing if she was still alive. There's a Carol Kittles in Miami and I, there's a couple actually, yeah. and one of them might be her. Like, who knows? I felt devastated for this woman. Like, I hope that she was able to move on with her life. But like, what a sad thing that your husband dies and then you can't even tell his mother or help his mother. Like, she was trying to find this woman to like pull her out of this. And there was another part in the article where when Vicky took off from Wilt Manners and the mother was gone with her, um, you know, the kid trying to find her like a year later, they, somebody like did a follow up and interview the police and the Broward Sheriff was like, please tell the mother she's not in trouble. Like the mother doesn't need to be on the lam. Right. Right. And so she can just come back. She's not under arrest. She's not in trouble. Like who, let knows, her, who knows what the daughter's telling her. Yeah. Them, you like, know? She doesn't need to be out there. Let, let Vicky's in trouble, not you. So, which was really sad, you know, it's crazy. And the fact that this woman, does she even know what happened to her son? I don't know. That, and God knows where she is. Where's this Ed Deppenbrock? Like, what yeah. in the Ooh, fuck? No, Ed, Ed, Ed might be gone. I mean. Ed might be gone. Wow. I think wow. even, like, the mere suggestion of, um, hey, hun, I think 40 dogs might be too much in our trailer. Oh, yeah. Would be, like, death. Yeah. Right? <laughs> maybe. I, I, like, bye. Yeah. Something's off. Something's definitely, like, this where is, is this person? Yeah. This, I love this story. Oh. <gasps> I love this story. Yeah. It is just, it, it is the strangest story. Yeah. And I love stories where, I mean, I don't love that a law has to be made, but the fact that now there are protections, like, yes. putting in place uh, to stop other people from doing that. But clearly, you're right. Like, she had some kind of illness that was untreated, and this is happening in the 80s and 90s where, you know, we still aren't really yeah. addressing mental health like we do today, where today... Yeah. Um, I think if this was happening in 2023, mm -hmm. that there would be more jail time. Or, well, if it was happening in 2023, she would have probably shot and killed her neighbors if they came yeah, right. on her property. And then, you know, wouldn't have gone to jail because we live yeah. in Florida. Yeah, would have been but, like, you know, stand otherwise, your ground. Stand your ground. otherwise, I would hope that she would get some kind of, you know, care through like a Baker Act or something, whatever. So. Oh, my God. Great something, story. Something. All right. Well, that crazy bitch, Vicky Kittles. Yeah. Holy shit. Ooh, and and I, when I found that, that the whole timeline, I sent it to my brother, my sister, my mom. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, my brother was like, this, she's all, oh, I'm like, we, we just, we just will never 
I will never forget that name. Uh, my friend Leanne lived in the neighborhood. I guarantee if I said to Leanne right now, like Vicky Kittle, she would fucking know uh, exactly what I'm talking about. I love this. I mean, I the horse the horse when the rain came out, like I I remember looking at this the is, house this is, and the horse came out and my eyes were like, wow, like a I, seven year old I, looking at a horse come out of a house. That's the most bizarre thing. It blew I, I my would, mind. It would blow my mind as an adult. Yeah. It was the wildest thing that happened on our street, like, ever. That's ever. the coolest story yeah. in the world. Yeah. And thank you for sharing it. You're welcome. It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> it's my birthday gift to you. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, now I'm going to pull us. Guess what, Tina? I have a horse for you in my oh. bedroom. <laughs> Could you oh. imagine somebody has a horse in the, the house next just to you? Just the smell. Ugh. And I, oh, I, I mean, uh, it must have just smelled and smelled and smelled. Like, I, if I don't change the litter boxes for yeah. a week, I'm like, oh, God. Like, I'll yeah. walk in my house, even though it's way back in the corner yeah. in the laundry room. I could, you could tell something's yeah. up. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine. And the animals are dying. Like, they're no. fucking dying. Yep. No, thanks. Girl. All right. Well, we will see you after. <gasps> I mean, this is coming out yeah, after our and, New York trip, and well, we had an amazing time. We did. We had such a great time. The best time. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we hung out with celebrities. Oh, oh, my God. We ate such good food. Yep. We had, like... We held hands so in Central Park. <gasps> we did. And we had all of our <laughs> lovely friends. Oh, and my God. I'm so excited about everybody be, going. I, I, it's going to be so fun. I'm so fucking this excited. Is, this is the best. Yeah. So. Emma's been sending us, she sent us this TikTok of like this cool jewelry place. Yes. Like vintage jewelry. She's like, we have to go. And I'm We're like, going oh. everywhere. Matching right. necklaces. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Yeah, it's going to be great. All right, well, we will see you on the flippity flop. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.